Hey everybody, welcome to August. How's everybody doing? Oh, it's so hot here. Oh my gosh. And I was not feeling so great. So I apologize if the video is a little late. Um, this, it, which makes total sense since we're coming into Mercury retrograde. <laughs> this is like, oh my gosh, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't able to do the video, but um, I am now. So here we go. I'm super excited about this month. Um, I happen to love Mercury retrograde. Um, I find it very, very helpful. And I know that there's a bad rap about it, but we have some fantastic, it, it goes first into Virgo and then back into Leo during the month of August. I just want to say that up front because we are going to be experiencing the energies of the need for regrouping, uh, reevaluating all the re's, right? Revisiting, um, making sure we still want what we say we want. Really, are we in alignment with our dreams and desires or have we already passed them? Have we surpassed all the things that we said? You know, and have we seen, or have, do we get another perspective this month? And this is for everybody. So this is kind of like, uh, again, remember we're, we're also coming into eclipse season in the fall. So this is the prep month. Um, yeah, you will still feel momentum and this is for everybody. I know we will, um, but it's both. And it's that sense of that tension between um, that and magnanimity and that sense of bigness and wanting things to be great and big and whatever. And this sense of, you know, needing to pull the reins in a little bit and say, yeah, but the yeah, but, um, you know, dot your eyes, cross your T's, look under the covers, look under the bed, right? it's make sure um, that you're paying attention to the details of things. And uh, <clears throat> so that's that's really going to be the an overarching theme this month. Um, but before we start, I'm going to be doing a reading. Um, you know, people ask me, like, are you doing predictions? And in a way, it is it's a forecast, it's an energy forecast. I'm looking at the energy, like the umbrella all of us are going to be under, some of the things that could come up for, and again, it's a collective energy. You'll know if it feels right to you. So far, um, it's been quite accurate, but our personal experience of these things are different. Um, so you're going to want to watch the video that I did with Debbie Frank um, to go over the Astro Oracle reading. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's a busy month for all of us, and yet we're still kind of restricted a little bit um, this month, but it's good. Like I find this a fantastic way in which to avoid mistakes. Um, so uh, Oracle School has started already, yay. And I do want to mention Wisdom of the Oracle. This is my deck that I teach with. And um, it had a baby. <laughs> and we call it Woto. Woto had a baby. Woto had a baby, the little pocket deck Woto. So we're going to be using the pocket deck today. Isn't it cute? It's so cute. It's purse size. Um, for those of you who carry carry satchels or purses or bags or whatever, you can carry this around with you like I do. Um, anyhow, so we're going to use the baby Woto pocket oracle today um, for our reading. I'm going to do a 15 card reading for, I think, hang on a second. Am I or am I going to do a 10 card? I'm not sure yet. Oh boy, it's a brand new deck. I haven't opened it yet. Oh my God, I literally haven't opened it yet. So for those of you who are new, this is how we do it. We, Because people are always asking, honest to God, the most important question people ask is, how do I shuffle my cards? So I realize that not everybody that comes to my channel or you know hangs out are new. I didn't real. I just always assume everybody is a little more sophisticated. So here's the thing. Like we can shuffle. I like to shuffle them just like this, just like this. And I cut... I, cut them in half so that they go both ways, right? So I go one way, then the other way, because this deck is red, both upright and reversed. And the reversals are called protection cards. So that means that the way I built this Oracle, the way that I was intuited to build, and I was led by the spirit of the deck to create this, um, a structure, uh, a container for its spirit to speak to you. Um, you know, in many respects, uh, this is a desired outcome is that you are really great. Even if you're about to step in a you know, pile of doo-doo, um, you're going to be forewarned and given a different way so that we can avoid mistakes. That's the whole point of this, doing any kind of divinatory work or any type of oracle reading, you know, in us is wisdom. In us is our higher selves. We know at some level we are going to know. Um, so keep an open mind. Let's see what's going on. And, and here we go. So the first three cards are really what's going on. 
Um, and what's going on right now as we step into August, this is great. I love the round and round card. So I've got this little baby card. So I've got buy the book, um, no place I call and, and actually no place I call them is the first card. So I, the, this is an anchor card, which means we've dropped the anchor on this theme this month. And this is what tells us the story about that. So this is round and round. And I'll just quickly tell you what this means. So the energy of this month is actually about home. Um, not your typical conversation around Leo season, right? But usually Leo season is about going out and being shiny. And, and yes, you can, right? Um, it's, but, but it's about being grounded, right? Which is again, why Mercury retrograde starts in Virgo, I think. I hope I'm right. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I'm better be, better be right. My brain just went, Wah. but anyhow, it's, it's in that sense of being grounded. We're being invited to get grounded, whatever the planets are doing. This is what it says. We need to be grounded in our own sense of self with a capital S. What does our soul want for us? You know, the soul is not interested in division. It's just not. It's interested in what you want to build. And it wants to use you, like you as the human vehicle, in order to express something that's of a higher nature. Um, and hence why it's so important to really focus on what you stand for and what's important to you, then look outside at what's not going on or what somebody else is doing. This is really a, a great invitation of going within and really like sticking to, you know, the good question, which is, all right, I, I'm gonna have to revisit this. What is home to me? I'm in the right, am I in the right community? Do I have right friends around me? Am I, am I inviting things into my life that just are, aren't in alignment with me? And did they work before? Maybe, and maybe it's time for us to regroup with that, right? Now, by the book is always about um, <clears throat> legacy, and it's about what we build, right? That that there are instructions. We already know what doesn't work. We So what we're doing here is setting a new foundation for, but we know what has worked in the past. And this is not the maverick month where you're going out and going like, I have a brand new idea. It's more about, oh, I'm going to repeat the thing that has worked that, you know, and know the what it doesn't, but really recognize that I don't have to do to, make the same mistakes twice. I don't have to. It's about choice this month. Really, it's about making choices. And the round and round card coming up for Mercury Retrograde, which starts on August 5th, is really about that very thing. I mean, we're already in the shadow of it. And I always talk about Mercury Retrograde because you can't, I, I believe that astrology is really, really important when we do our readings because it gives us that map that's, you know, more scientific. It's a sense, it's not, this is really me at reading energy and the map of astrology will give us a little bit more, uh, you know, of the net of the, of the actual, yes, this is true. This is what's reflected in the stars and each person is going to have their own unique experience with this. But this really does say that, you know, we are required and asked, invited into going around and regrouping and revisiting some of the things that we thought were important and so, and the new things that we would like so it's seed planting, especially around the new moon that's come up on August 4th. It's uh, really about like what, you know, what, what seeds are you going to plant? They're not going to come up right away. Remember that. Like just because you planted a seed um, doesn't mean the seed is going to grow by the 14th or something, right? <laughs> like it's getting really, really beautifully clear at the beginning of August. So that as we enter into, especially the three weeks where it's going to get, you know, like we're going to feel that tension between um, that sense of like, oh, wow, look at all the things that we can do to, oh, not so fast. Like we really have to slow it down a little bit um, before we get shot out of a cannon in September and the rest of the fall. Uh, it's one of the reasons that we actually opened up Oracle School earlier this year. Why my dream quest mastermind is also, you know, we're opening up admissions now. We did everything a little earlier because we recognize just that chaos that's that's it's, it's, it's kind of coming. It's going to go. It's not going to be there forever. It's already started. So nothing new, right? We just go, okay, so how do I weather this storm? Like, you know, am I going to go out without an umbrella? No. <laughs> so it's kind of like, how do you plan where, you know, what is your community? What, you know, what, where do you want to be um, uh, as you navigate these really phenomenal and it's phenomenal what's going on in the world. I mean, you planned on being here. Like you didn't come here by accident. Okay, so where are we naturally heading? Um, and again, this is from today's point of vantage. <clears throat> oh, change in the wind, yang, and happy, happy in the protection mode. So 
A change in the wind is in the center. Yang and happy, happy are flanking. So these are the baby cards. Woto had a baby. Um, so change in the wind is the first card, which represents that we need to be resilient and adaptable to when things change without us being the orchestrator or the, the architect of the change. So that's when situations show up for us. We're like, oh, I didn't think that was going to happen, but it is. And this is telling you to have a really good sense of humor and not to take yourself or other people personally. Um, and you're going to have energy to that will come out of this. So a new found energy um, is going to come to you that you weren't expecting. Now that's already happened in the world as we see rapid changes that unexpected changes and things like that. Um, and, you know, so there's, it goes up, it goes down, it goes sideways. And this is about, you're on a ride. You may as well strap yourself in and have a sense of humor about it because nothing lasts forever. Um, and major changes are happening, especially over the next year and a half since we hit over all over the 2025. And we're in the prep mode of it. And we really are stepping into that Aquarian. Um, certainly when Pluto goes into Aquarius full on, it's there for the next 20 years or so, or even more. So um, we are part of this really extraordinary change and shift in the world, and we may as well enjoy the ride um, and see, like, that's the other thing I've, I've come to recognize that one of the things that I say now in my prayers every day, instead of give me what I want, it's well, not that I've said that, but in the back of my mind, I've like wanted things. It's more like surprise me, you know, what's best surprise me, help me, help me stay resilient and adaptable and flexible to whatever comes my way that I can stay in my integrity and serve at the high for the highest good of all. Um, and for the highest good of people who are interested in um, what I have to say, because there's lots of people out there doing stuff. Now, what are, well, this is good. Very interesting. Okay, so what's going on to help us in, in like whatever is our, our helping, our, the, the people around us that are, that are there to actually guide us and help us and help us move out of obstacles because it's, this is, these are the three cards that represent obstacles and what can help us. Because uh, there's always no point in just saying what the obstacles are. We'd like to know how to get around them, right? And otherwise, why do the cards? <laughs> so what I love about this is the way out is so simple. So fork in the road is making a choice, right? You have to make a choice. Absolutely. Your number one priority. What choice am I making? If you're making no choice, that's still a choice, right? If you're putting your head in the sand, still a choice. The choice that you're making right now is going to impact a you know, the rest of the year, really important that you say, you know what, this is a new choice I'm making and recognize you do have choice. There's no such thing here as I have no choice. Yes, we have no control over larger events, etc. But our tiny little, um, you know, like, a, for example, when water eventually, you know, moves or, or, or it does stuff to like um, rocks, it smooths out of rocks over time, like those movements, those consistent movements that you know are right for you. It does say that you will be making choices based on new information that is going to come to you in August. New information, I don't know what it's going to be. We're all going to get it. And, and what the choice will be, but you will make, you will be invited to make a new choice. Now, what flanks those, those cards are great because the new choice will give you more stability. And that's what we're all looking for is what is stable. Um, it doesn't tell us to pull out any, you know, rotten what locks from our foundation. It tells us we're building a new foundation. Um, and here is chop wood. So chop wood, carry water. This is just a day at a time, you know, moving through the world, in a way that we feel, we wake up in the morning, we feel we're integrity, the integrity is there. And at the end of the day, we put our heads on the pillow. Do we live, can we live with ourselves? Can we do it better? Whatever. It's very much about doing the work, whatever the work is. Um, the other thing about this is on an, on again, energetic level, it does slow us down. Um, when you see building blocks and chop wood, it doesn't say go and make something ginormous. No, it's like, you know what the dream is? take the small micro steps. This is all about micro steps and it might be the cha-cha. Four steps forward, eh, 10 steps back. Let's take a look at that again. We can make, we can change our mind. That's the other thing. This is a month where you're able to change your mind and give yourself permission with new information that you can change your mind, period. Now, um, the other thing energetically about this is what I love about it is that because I hear a lot of stuff where people are feeling it's so heavy and it really isn't. And um, I mentioned this uh, actually at my um, Oracle Secrets webinar. You know, one of the things that um, 
a lot of people don't know, but you feel, we really feel it. Um, as a, a world order disintegrates, we don't see it all come down at once. It's not like a bomb that, that you know, brings down a building at all. It's a slow, it's kind of slow bit by bit by bit. And, but what happens is, so if that's our fabric of our reality, and that's, let's say that's the systems or the operating modus operandi that we're used to, um, the phenomenal opportunity that comes with this, and a lot of people will look at that as that's chaotic, we have to hold on to what was, we have to stay in our comfort zone. This is really talking about um, us having the opportunity to make different choices. And because now all of a sudden, imagine that that fabric, all the threads are being pulled open and there's all these holes. What do you what what new pattern are you going to weave into the fabric of reality? And that's up to all of us. Like we are we have choices and we have to execute those choices. We have to we have to take the time to choose. Remember, any action or even non-action is a choice, right? So the question is, what are you no longer willing to tolerate this month in yourself? first, because that's what invites the things or the people, places, and things in your life that come at you in a way, not always, because sometimes we are, um, you know, we are subject to the whims, it appears, uh, you know, life on life's terms is stuff that we don't choose often, but we can choose our response to those things. We are response able, <coughs> excuse me, oh, and that's what this is about. Okay, so the obstacle cards are great. It says we are going to make a choice. The choice will get us out of the obstacle. It's quite simple. And we just keep chipping away at whatever it is that's in front of us one day at a time. Now, hidden influences. Um, yeah, I love it. Uh, so the hidden influences first card is a leg up, which is all about help, getting help. Get Help is there. We don't see the help all the time. The help will come through ser serendipitous events, right? So we think, we don't know how. I don't know the how is it going to happen. How is it going to go? How? The how is not our job. The how is the job of um, what is invisible, like the energy, um, our energy, and how we focus on that energy actually brings about reality. We choose reality based on what goes on internally and then what we notice in the outside world. That's just a scientific fact. Our, uh, you know, whatever we believe at a core level, our reticular activating system of the brain is going to take our eyeballs and go look for it in the outer world because there's so much going on out there. Like, which, what are we going to notice? So this is really about the shift in what we notice. Um, and when we surrender and say, surprise me, all of a sudden there are these serendipitous events. Now, why do we get this new life card upside down? And it's an interesting thing because we don't know. This is uncharted territory. So when the new life is, when you first see the fairy coming out of the egg, fairies don't come out of eggs, right? But in my deck, they do. So there's this idea that this fairy is coming out of an egg. And, it, and obviously it's like, it's brand new. It's like, whoa, this is new. And you feel like spring and it's really good. But when it's upside down, it's like, you really have to say, I don't know, right? Oh, this is new. I don't know. I need to learn. So it's really asking us this August to be in that kind of beginner mind, which is really going to be helping us right through the rest of the year. <clears throat> and it's a great invitation here. Now, oh my God, excuse me. So those are the hidden influences that, again, this is great. And then what does, what's the energy that the future, where are we heading? That there was a natural way. Um, and now it's like, what's the outcome? Um, again, the outcome is energy, right? So if we follow along with the way the story goes, <laughs> this is great. Time to go. Now, time to go is a very clear indication that we are going to get the message in a bottle and milk and honey. If we want that peace of mind, that clarity, that playfulness. That's all. Remember August? August is Leo season. It's playfulness. It's creativity. Um, it's typically that month where we want to consider how are we going to shine? And shining has nothing to do with your ego. Shining is how do we let people know that we're here to serve, right? That's for those of you who usually watch my videos or how do you create something that's going to, you know, it says you will have the quiet, like ability, you have the ability, it's given to you here, like the milk and honey cards, like it's not hard, you're not going to have like a horrible come to Jesus moment, it's more like, oh, yeah, you know what, it's time to go, 
from that because this is what I'm seeing ahead of me. I don't really understand it. I don't 100% know how it all works, but I know I see a light. I see that light and I'm going to go for that light. I'm going to see that that light, that that um, lighthouse, um, you know, from the choppy waters and I'm going to go towards that lighthouse and that's exactly what it's requiring and maybe you become the lighthouse for others. I think this is a great month. I'm excited. Um, just know you might want to do something. You're meant to slow down, be a little more cautious, but go for it. There is going to be momentum this month, um, uh, and but it's not going to be like barreling into your future prosperity. It's much more thoughtful um, for everybody. Okay, that's it. Love you all. Thank you so much, and I apologize for that. Oh. <clears throat> I've been sick for almost two weeks. It's uh, I, I, yay, yay. Uh, but I'm not too sick to be here for you. I'm just apologizing for being a bit late. Um, anyway, love you guys. Take care. Let's uh, let's see what happens at the end of the month and look back and go, ooh, that was really accurate. That's what most people say. <laughs> Bye. Take care. <laughs>